Another video talking about prisms, I've tried to just sit in the chats and accumulate as much knowledge, perspective, opinions on all of this as I can. I'm going to break down this, first of all, from just reading over the articles, making uh, points along the way. So this is going to be a read through. If you want to relax, grab a bag of popcorn, maybe order some DoorDash. You're more than welcome to. So next week, we have the Third Kingdom Prism Sale. Looks like there's going to be about six different ones, assuming these diamonds are actually a part of it, but these ones are going to be premium prisms. And the premium prisms are only available for this season one. The Third Kingdom is an upcoming strategy simulation game where you will develop your surreal scapes, manage resources like mycelium, refine materials, and discover new islands to create a production empire. Prisms are a collection of in-game items that help you optimize your strategy for resource discovery within your surreal scapes. Each prism purchased in the sale will be premium, boasting superior trait advantages in the Third Kingdom game. Up to 312,500,000 root is waiting to be rewarded to players in the first season of the Third Kingdom. Prisms are key to optimizing your game strategy and will be available for sale on March 25th. There are 135,000 premium prisms available in Season 1 of the Third Kingdom, with the number of Surrealscape parcel slots exceeding the number of prisms. While Surrealscape holders enjoy a significant advantage and access to greater rewards in the Third Kingdom, those without will be able to participate by planting prisms on community land, so whether you own Surrealscapes or not, prisms are a must-have game-ready collectible, providing access to the game and its ongoing rewards. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything super notable off of this. I don't know if we have the clarity regarding the community lands. That kind of reads whether you have the surreal scapes or not. Uh, you can participate, and that is just simply for people who are buying the prisms. Not sure what that means for people who own surreal scapes. We might see a lot of people try to sell them on secondary if they're not participating in this prisms mint. Also, we know several other collections like Cool Cats, Dead Fellas, doodles are a part of this including pudgy penguins walk a world we don't know if those community lands are going to be specific to those collections how it's going to work because it sounds like this is a game that you have to figure out the most optimal strategy to uh, succeed in vying for that 312 million route so the sale mechanic unlock the potential of prisms with the prism fair auction value protocol powered by the root network this innovative sale mechanic empowers the community to shape a fair price for prisms, ensuring fair distribution and enhanced liquidity. The prism sale has three phases, a fair value sale, a voucher distribution phase, and a redemption phase before proceeding to each step. Let's define a few key terms that will help you understand the process. So fair value sale, the act of determining a common price for an asset or a collectible, the Prism Voucher, a tradable and fractionable ticket that is refundable for a Prism one-to-one. -one. So just think of this. If you have half of something, do you have a whole? No, you have half of something, and you need another half for that. You might have less than a half. You might have more than a half. It gets right down there. But you need an entire whole to be able to claim a Prism. So it's like a, you know, as it mentions, fractionable, but don't, don't, worry about that part right now and then the prism a utility focused collectible that helps you optimize your game strategy and unlock rewards in the third kingdom game so phase one it's going to be two weeks for the fair value sale prisms are exclusively available to prism voucher holders with each whole voucher exchangeable for a prism collectible one to one in phase one participants are invited to spend root to buy their desired number of prism vouchers this phase kicks off with each voucher set at a minimum price of six nine six point nine root with a total of 135,000 vouchers up for grabs so currently this mint looks like it's about 70 75 dollars depending on the way the root price goes if it stays at that minimum price so again this is minimum it could go up with demand it depends 
As the root sales for Prism vouchers accumulate, the sales subscription level rises. The price per Prism voucher remains the same until total subscription exceeds 100%. If the subscription is exceeded, calculated as the voucher minimum price x total supply, the price for each Prism voucher will increase proportionally, reflecting community demand. So TLDR, it's because you just don't want people to put a whole lot of root within this. Uh, and it, I do believe that it's going to be locked for those full two weeks. So this is a massive, massive token sink. If you're newer to the space or not familiar, basically a token sink is just a form of utility for a token, taking it out of supply. Similar to if you think of NFTs, how some of them you have to stake for a token, that takes it off the market. And so people say, oh, these aren't tradable. The price goes up in some cases. But this is this is a huge token sink. Uh, the sale dashboard will update in real time, displaying your current Prism vouchers based on your funds in the sale protocol and the current price of Prism voucher. Once your root is added, it cannot be withdrawn or refunded. You can spend more root to buy Prism vouchers as many times as you like until phase one closes. Following the sale, Prism vouchers will be listed for trade on Dexter. It's interesting that they're going with Dexter here. If you don't know, there's Dexter and Moai Finance, but this one seems that Dexter is getting the liquidity for Prism vouchers. This pricing mechanic is designed to maintain fairness, allowing the price of prison vouchers to scale with the demand, ensuring a fair distribution among all participants based on the funds they have put into the sale. Note that prism vouchers are fractional to six decimal places. So you might receive proportion, sorry, you might receive portions of a voucher like 3.73, yada, yada, yada. Participants may choose to increase their root spend to secure a whole prison voucher if the price increases or use decks to acquire them post sale. Additional funds can be added at any point during the sale. So just imagine, let's say that you needed an entire Bitcoin to do something. And if you had less than a Bitcoin, you would have to trade that or accumulate the difference on a trading market. And then once you had a whole Bitcoin, then you could redeem it for a physical Bitcoin. But in this case, it's a, it's a voucher, right? Does that make sense? Is that a horrible reference? <laughs> Hopefully you guys got that. All right. So phase two, Prism voucher distribution. Once the sale ends, Prism vouchers will be distributed to each participant automatically. Also, I know that you're not going to exchange for a physical Bitcoin. Just get that out of the way. Uh, the number of vouchers you receive depends on how much root you put in compared to the final voucher price set during phase one fair value sale. The formula used for this calculation is as follows. User root spent, uh, yeah, I'm not going through that. Okay, any Prism vouchers that remain unsold at the end of the sale will be reclaimed by the project. Ooh, that's interesting. Any Prism vouchers that remain unsold at the time of sale will be reclaimed by the project. Additionally, Prism vouchers will become tradable on Dexter. This trading opportunity allows users to either acquire additional vouchers to meet the threshold for a Prism collectible or trade their existing vouchers. This flexibility ensures that participants can adjust their holdings according to their needs or strategy for Prism's redemption. Phase three, Prism's collectibles redemption. Shortly after the sale is concluded and Prism vouchers have been distributed, Prism's collectibles redemption will open. In this phase, users can exchange each one whole Prism voucher they hold for one Prism. If you receive a fractional number of Prism vouchers, such as 3.73, you can redeem three Prisms. To complete the fourth, you're going to need to add uh, the additional 0.26 voucher token through Dexter. This is the final chapter of the Prism Fair Value Protocol, where the community will have secured Prisms. The Third Kingdom Prisms collection will be listed and tradable on mark. So Futureverse rewards. As a special incentive during the first 24 hours of the Prism sale, participants will receive a 10x engagement score boost for any route spent to purchase Prism vouchers. The more vouchers you purchase, the greater your engagement score. For the duration of the sale, each Prism voucher purchased will reward a base 10 engagement score. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting because a lot of the community has pointed out that this is massive dilution of future score. If you're not familiar with future verse, future score, basically future score is a loyalty program, I would argue, that is also kind of allowing you to play a game of getting root tokens for helping test out the network in various ways. Now, the future score has a base score or like kind of a normal, but then it also has a bonus part of it that is the engagement score. So if you participate in the first 24 hours of this, you're going to get a 10x engagement score uh, for participating within this. So it's 
going to be like a, a pretty large amount off the rip. And there has been people that have said, ah, not a huge fan of that. But I think seeing how many people aren't really paying attention to this, the aspect that I don't think many are going to jump in in that first 24 hours because they simply don't understand the value proposition of future score is going to be minimal. I would argue, sure, it dilutes, but it kind of dilutes more the people that were going to buy this anyway. And if there is more community participation, the only way to get root is to own these assets and be participating within the quest. So I think you know, well, or, or buying it on secondary. And so this kind of goes back to the community in a way. Um, of course, as I'm going through this, if you have any extra flaws with the way that I'm thinking or wanting to add anything, very much encourage you to leave it down in the comments below. There will be a future score quest for participating in the Prism sale, which will be marked as complete when one Prism collectible is redeemed. The future score quest program is designed to test the root network that powers the Third Kingdom. To participate, you will need to create a future pass, and that is going to be your passport to the open metaverse. So it talks about how to get root within there. If you're wanting to go do that, you can check it out but let's kind of have a quick little discussion about some of the thoughts that i had regarding it so assuming that it stays around the 700 root or about 75 dollars from a specific nft landscape in terms of flippability people are paying way more than less than a hundred dollars on these different NFTs speculating this, you are going to be getting the root back. You are going to be able to supercharge a future score so you can actually get root right away, which is going to be an incentive for potentially anybody new within the ecosystem realizing, Hey, this is a really sweet way of rewarding participating in the ecosystem uh, and getting something back for that. Basically immediately doing your traditional DeFi uh, stuff or just participating in general. Uh, the root that you're going to get back from the yield of the prism is probably going to be more than the cost. People have broken down the math, and I believe that it's going to be over 2,000 root per prism. That's not to account for future score, any surprise and delight, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of a base number of what they've looked at. So again, flippability, arguably, of the NFT, likely getting the root back from the yield of the prism seems extraordinarily likely, barring some of the weird uh, requirements or happenings within that. And the mega bonus for participating in the first 24 hours. Now, in the recent episode of 30 Minutes Max, which is the Futureverse community call, I did upload that on my YouTube channel. Uh, they were asked questions about, hey, you know, <laughs> we're supposed to have the full root allocation out within this two to three-ish year time frame, supposed to be two, uh, from my understanding. But it feels that if we're trying to go at a rapid pace, we're a couple months behind. So our quest going to speed up is the multiplier of future score to the quest rewards going to increase. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of beat around the bush, but not to overassume or anything. But if they do ramp up those quests again, participating, having that engagement score is another way uh, that enhances kind of getting that return initially, where this is kind of just like a, a fun free mint that you can see if you like this ecosystem and you know that it's coming. It's not something that's kind of, you know, speculated more so than these uh, other things. And as I mentioned before, the concern about the future score dilution, uh, but as I mentioned, participants have to buy the root off of us to participate. So it kind of is what it is. And then for my only issues with it, I have like pretty much all my roots staked. So I have to figure out if we don't get a decent future score bonus for these upcoming future quests, then I might be in an interesting predicament. I wish we knew a little bit more about the NFTs as well, because if I am trying to get more root to be able to get the max amount of prisms for my current surreal escapes allocation, but I don't really want to do anything, and I'm just going to see how it all plays out. I had a note. Let me check. Hold on. There was one other thing that I wanted to mention. Ah, okay, I thought of it, sorry. And with the aspect of knowing that for the future score quests, some of them, a lot of them, it has required you to own a, another NFT. And if you didn't have those, you weren't able to complete those quests. 
So we might have a lot of people participate in the first 24 hours of this mint, get that future score, be participating in it, potentially dilute the future scores of everybody. But what's the chances that they're actually going to go and complete that quest? if they need to go get those other assets. So it's a very interesting ecosystem development that they've had. I've been rambling for a little bit. Hopefully this has helped you. I've seen a lot of commotion within the Discord. So again, just wanting to leave a perspective and hope you guys enjoy that. Be sure to tune in every day where we do X feed on my feed. Bye.